Alright everyone, uh, back to where we left off. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the Sky Ripper. Yeah, the core of the Sky Ripper. Uh, it just makes more sense. Uh, Playthrough wise, I just found the artifact. Um, so I'm guessing this is a little piece that, uh, that powers it. it was so we're going to go that way. way. He'd sacrificed his old friend Lapino to get the armature. And the armature was useless by itself. Only a series of coils and wheels. War demanded sacrifices. And he would make more before the end. He would have to choose the greatest good, no matter how much it cost him. Zenobia. Well, he would see her sooner or later, across a battlefield or a sword's point before all this was over. He was sure of that. The power was in the core. Obviously, he had to get the core. Yeah, and the game tries to make you feel bad about abandoning Lupino, but from my previous playthrough, if you've been watching, you'll see that Lupino was a jerk and totally shot me in the belly with a crossbow bolt because he was actually working for the Empire and was just a spy uh, against the rebels. Before he was even out of sight of the Farfarer, why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? It was the sort of path he'd always avoided, the path of responsibility, of seriousness. Had he grown up? He didn't feel grown up. He'd made this decision from his gut, like he always did. Somehow, he'd impulsively decided to stop being impulsive. Did that make any sense? So once again, I believe this is a new area. I don't think I've been here before. I don't remember toadstools and such. Um, this game's pretty. It, it's not... Um, <laughs> One of the complaints that a lot of people make... Yanking his own chain, wasn't he? Ah, funny. Ah, once again, I can't go back. I'm sure there was something back there. Um, people complain a lot that games became too gray and too brown. Um, oh, this will probably let me teleport back. Nice. Uh, too gray and too brown in modern games, and uh, it seems like here recently a lot of games are trying to, to avoid that, that stigma. Um, this is definitely one of those. Um, it seems like Battleborn's doing that as well from what I played in the beta. Uh, the difference being with Battleborn, I feel like it's super busy. That game is, it's so colorful, it's so bright and has so much going on that you just... Eh, at any point during the game there were a lot of, a lot of times where I just had no idea what was going on. Whereas this game, I'm not having a problem keeping track visually of, of what's going on in the screen. Square to jump down. Okay, we'll go this way real quick. Yeah, good thing I didn't jump down yet. Yeah, I just wish I had some kind of little indicator to say, hey, you know, by the way, this is going to forward the story, uh, but there's still a little path over here, so, you know, I can use my intuition to say, hey, I want to search around a little more to see what's in the environment. Um, it's... <sighs> It's just a, it's a gamer habit, uh, you know, growing up with games, especially growing up as a, you know, small child playing games in the early 90s, it's just, it's it, the collectathon, the, the collection in games and, you know, maximizing your content is just something that's, I'm very aware of and very mindful of. So it would be nice to know, like, hey, by the way, you know, just small little indicator, some kind of visual cue that says, hey, this is, uh, this is going to go forward, there you won't be able to come back here. In the air. That's probably like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. I'll try this way. Yep. Glad odd I went this way. They never locked these things. Yeah, it's odd that they never locked those chests, and it's odd that they're in the weirdest places. I I would like to see a sequel to this game. I really would. I would like to um and not to take its originality away from it and its multiple, you know, playthroughs and endings and how they have the gameplay structure set up. Um, but I would really like to see this as like a, you know, an open world kind of Diablo style game. Um, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I have a, a supreme love for open world style games, um, even though they're they're getting to the point where every other game is open world. Um, and a lot of them do it in a very repetitious fashion, like everything is very formulaic, like a like a Far Cry or a typical Ubisoft game. Um, but I think if I think if done right, this could make for a nice little open world. You know. Oh, there we go. I'm down. I would like to see this game be successful. Uh, I do think that it's 
I think it's going to be a casualty of war for for the timeline in which this game comes out, you know, being released on the same day as Dark Souls 3. And I know they're completely different types of games, but, you know, just the likelihood of someone purchasing this when Dark Souls is a uh, has become such a gamer's game. And gamers seem to be very mindful of their dollars. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't help them any of the fact that Dark Souls comes out today if they have that as competition. Even though it is completely indirect competition. There were fewer and fewer trees. There are only these huge crystalline growths. Had those been here before? He no longer heard birds except for the feverish cawing of the ravens when they attacked. He couldn't smell the small animals of the forest. The mice and rabbits. Where had they gone? And he was getting hungry too. This was an unhealthy place to be. Okay, now there's a shield enemy, and now she'll just rip his shield away. Very nice. Okay. That makes them not such a pain in the ass to fight anymore. The counter attacking does feel really nice. And it looks cool. I do like being able to bounce back and forth between enemies. It's like when you get a uh, combat multiplier going in Batman really well, and Batman can veritably like leap across the screen. Physics-wise, it makes no sense, but it does look super awesome, and this has a very, very similar feel to that. Oh, that looks cool. And I'll probably end this playthrough right after picking this up. The 20-sided core made him feel physically sick. Once he had sneaked into a temple of the dark art and he hadn't liked what he smelt and saw there, this felt like that. As quick as he could, he wrangled the icosahedron into the armature. The wheels began to spin, then glow. The sick feeling quickly spun away. Now he only felt sad. He had lost good friends for this war apparatus. Hmm, maybe Lapino wasn't such a good friend. <laughs> yeah, that made him feel better. He carried his prize back to the Farfarer. Now, he had to make his next move. There was a key Imperial outpost on the Nexus. If this really was some sort of super weapon, he could use it to wreak havoc on the enemy. And if it wasn't, well, better to know that before the final battle. But maybe he should show it to some scientists first. There was an observatory on the Nexus. Maybe he should go there before he fired it. Okay, and I will end this playthrough here. Uh, and my options being seek help from scientists or no time for fussing. Um, attack the outpost. So, uh, next playthrough, I will start at this point. Uh, thanks everyone for watching.